<laughs> Thanks, Candice. So, you're listening to Danger FM, and we're here bringing you the greatest content and the best podcasts. I hope you're enjoying the show. Uh, now, if you'd like to subscribe to our Patreon, you can get extra content. Ooh, whoa, 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 Yeah, imagine that. But now, listen up for this. It's Gary Gripley and the Toads. Previously on the Danger Club podcast. You see, the thing is, I'm always stoned. Nice one, Beelzebub. Smash! Smash! All right, don't get cocky now, kid. Given the fact that we're having a slime fight in a sewer, this has been remarkably <laughs> mature as an episode for all of us. Caragor's going to quick draw his plus one cold iron heavy mace. Just going to try out Windu for the first time. Cast it into the fire! Destroy it! <laughs> we have defeated our first ooze of hey. this adventure. The adventure continues now. All right, sounds good. Uh, Ross, can I get three claps? Scott, can I get three claps? Dan, can I get three claps? James, can I get three claps? And Drunk, can I get three claps? Thank you very much, everyone. Where are your three claps? Oh, I don't need to do them. What? <laughs> it's not I'll, right. just... I'll do them if you want. There you oh, go. No, they weren't very good. Pull in the clapless. <laughs> <laughs> he thinks he's above the clap, man. He thinks he's above the clap. That's the trouble. Well, I'm, I'm basically nobody's sinking. above the clap. I'm sinking myself to my own sound, so it's a bit, you know. You know nothing of the clap. <laughs> 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 Expert opinion there, Ross. Does anyone else get self-conscious about the claps that they do? I know we only do them to sync up audio at the start of these, but every, so every now and then I'll do my three claps and I go, "Oh, they were a bit shit. I, I want to redo this." <laughs> Well, well, for a long time, because uh, most people's claps don't come through on, on my mic, so I just thought that you couldn't clap. All of you just sort of, yeah. I guess, everyone's sort of like, just sort of like, what? what come on, guys. Boom, boom, boom. There you go. Yeah. I can do it. Dan, yeah. I hate to tell you this, but we've got a WhatsApp group called Dan's Claps. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Actually, the, the BBC have been in touch. They kind of want to syndicate it. So, uh, yeah, you know, Dan's you Claps might become the, a... The man born without a clap, which in many ways you'd think would be a good thing. But... <laughs> Not in the entertainment. With the clap, that would be awful. <laughs> Do you imagine well, that? I love this sound banter. This is great. Do you know what sound I mean? Danger is going to love this. Sound banter, banter, mate. A sound banter. Well, you, you're already thinking about Danger Recall in two years' time when you can do a whole bit about syncing up audio, can't you? This is, oh this God, is perfect yeah. tech. It's the only reason uh, I started this. You can call the episode Claptrap. Oh! oh. Well, then Bye. put... Put your hands together, everybody, because hello, everyone, and welcome to the Danger Club podcast. Hey! Ladies oh, and gentlemen, that. drum actually did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, without sound, though. Without sound, I did silent clapping, like, like a little schoolgirl. <laughs> like <that>. Anyway. <Yeah. laughs> Sorry. Absolutely delightful. Um, it's a shame we're not going to do video on this one because the way all the monasters are stacked up uh, on Zoom at the moment, uh, Scott has car- some wonderful artwork from Caragor um, as the back as his background, um, and Ross is directly above him, and it just looks like Caragor has Ross's face, um, and it's it's just Ooh. lovely. P- plot twist. Well, I mean, Terrifying. we could take a picture of it and then put it out, couldn't we? Could. That's what we could do. Maybe we'll do that because we've we'll... got the technology. We've got the technology to do it. We we've got have. The power. We have, and I'll, I will put a reminder on our phones so we remember to actually do it. We're so often we're always like, yeah, we'll put a picture up for that. And then weeks later, Dangerlings are just like, can you can you do that? And yeah. we're like, oh yeah. Where's that thing you said you were going to do? <laughs> I, wish, I wish we had video footage of what Scott's trying to do to the bottom of Ross right now, because uh, <laughs> that is just suspect. Give, it a, give, him the, give him the squishy bit of poke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. We've already gone there. We've <laughs> Ah, uh, it's a visual gag. It's a visual gag. It's a yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a two-finger is... tussle. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't Do give you... that away for free, man. Don't give that away. Let's let's put it on Patreon oh. if we're going to touch Ross's soft bits. Speaking of soft, squishy things uh, like oh, Ross yeah. is behind, uh, you fought a news last week. Mm, That's right. Yeah. Yeah. 
That's right, yeah. Ross. I went from your behind to ooze in very few jumps right there. <laughs> I mean, they're very ooze much you, alike. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we fought on ooze ages and ages and ages ago, didn't we? Well, you fought one in back in uh, in Ilsurian yeah. in our first ever adventure. We fought the Sanguine Ooze, but that a it was first edition, and also it was a swarm. Like mechanically, it was a swarm. So I think this is the first time you fought an actual like rules as written ooze uh, in this. Right. Time. It, was a, it was called a Sanguine Ooze, but it wasn't actually an ooze. Yeah. It was, it was one of these things where it was like, it might as well be, but it's really hard. In first edition, it's quite hard to make an ooze that is a worthwhile encounter for first level characters in it because they're quite powerful. So they found a way to make it. So it was, you know, yeah. it's hard like to have an engulf attack at low level. Can I, can I ask a question? Isn't yep. ooze related to a gelatinous cube? I was just going to ask the same thing. Yeah, really? I was going to ask the same thing. Yeah, yeah. I can tell you what, gelatinous cube is a kind of ooze. Yes, ooze right. is a type of monster of which there okay. are various types. Um, and there are, you know, black puddings, gelatinous cubes, ah, sewer whoa, whoa, oozes, whoa, whoa. ochre jellies. So yeah. there's black pudding. There is black yeah. pudding in this game. Oh, yeah. Black uh, puddings really? have been in, like, in TTRPG lore for, for aeons, for ages. They were like oh. OG D&D stuff, they were. Black pudding. Now, yeah. <laughs> who out there likes black pudding? Do you like black pudding, anyone? Uh, I love black pudding. I'm a fan. I don't mind no. it. Yes, all right. I'll smash a bit of black pudding, mate. Yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah. I'll eat it. Yeah, Although, yeah, yeah. it's one of those things that it's like, oh, they always give you such small pieces. And then when you buy some, you realise that it's incredibly rich. <laughs> I've made yeah, a mistake yeah, yeah. of like, yeah, big old blow of black pudding yeah. on my breakfast and then eaten half it and been like, oh my God, I can't eat more than that. Is uh, black pudding overseas? Is it? Or I, is it just an English I, I Scottish think thing? I think it's often called blood pudding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think, which is more descriptive let's more be honest literal. black is yeah. burying the lead on that that is not yeah. the key thing about that <laughs> yeah, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah, well yeah. It's, it's like haggis um, as well so that's kind of I was a just quaint name for something rather frank just about to say James haggis anyone like haggis out there yeah, yeah. Love, haggis. Love, haggis. Love, love haggis love haggis yeah. the leaps and now tattics. also uh, uh, obviously none of us are uh, vegetarian or vegan here but you can get vegetarian and vegan haggis which is also very very good I bet yeah. it's really good actually it's yeah, amazing I see yeah. that working I, Drummond you make some amazing haggis nachos I don't know if you've <laughs> ever been sober when you've served them to us to the point you'd remember the recipe but you have served me some amazing haggis nachos over the years mm. yeah yeah that, that was a fun movie night and um, and it was quite close to Burns night so you know that, that, that haggis from Lidl cheap and delicious mm. Burns night which is my birthday just is to, it? yeah uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Trying to steal Robbie Burns Thunder. <laughs> um, I, that's that's not as bad as actually being Robbie Burns on two different Burns nights to uh, a bunch of Scottish people. I've done that before at the behest <laughs> of a lot of middle class rich English people. Yeah, you could you could come and do Rob, Robert Burns, couldn't you? And and read the the, the thing to the haggis. So like, yeah, I mean, you could, I could you could get a Scottish person to do it if you want, but I mean, <laughs> I'll do it because it's a moneyed gig. Sure, fine. Uh, I did this yeah. I did this gig in this fancy bar. Um, read out the address to the haggis and another one of his poems from Mem, from Mem, nice. and uh, yeah. the 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 English people were loving it, and there was three narrowed eyes at the other end of the bar, <laughs> three <laughs> narrowed yeah. Scottish yeah. eyes. Yeah. They, were, yeah. they were from Aberdeenshire, <laughs> and they were not having it. Quite rightly so. Quite <laughs> rightly so. Where, where, where are you from, lad? Hey? Where are you from? Yeah, yeah. Hey? What, what kind of? Accent? Oh, oh I know that town, eh? Hey? Hey. Scott, you've uh, you've played Burns on Burns Night, but have you ever played two characters in in one whole night? Because uh, I do. I don't know if you knew that. I play like Beelzebub and Fulton at the same time. Uh, just, just saying, yeah. Just yeah, we've I'd... heard, mate. We've heard. Yeah, we we all know about five that. narrowed pairs of eyes. <laughs> 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 that and the entire Pathfinder community being like, yeah, yeah, we know, we know about yeah, that. Ross. Know just about extending it, my uh, voice reel. That's all it is. Yeah, just. Uh, you think this is bad? After we went off the air with Dan- we did uh, we recorded Dangerous Wednesdays this week about uh, and talked about gunslingers uh, so that'll be maybe last week or week before it will have gone out from when this episode airs and it's like Ross is asking loads of questions about how would we have gunslingers in our campaign and I'm like yeah you know I'm, I'm not adverse to it I, I like firearms I think it'd be good as a thing to, to make as an available option I, I, I'm sure we could find a way to make it work and after it goes off air Ross is just like yeah Got some real good gunslinger ideas. I'm gonna, yeah. so it's like you already have two characters. <laughs> three. I'm going for the three. Yeah, right. The Cornetto right. trilogy. Kind of, 
Conan kind of Conan averse Conan. to like having guns in a fantasy setting. I'm sort of like that's the it's a bit of a line for me. I'm like, you know what? Maybe the what odd one off. But if they become in any way near prolific, you lose the feel of a, of a fantasy swords and sorcery kind of setting for me. I think this... we had it. We had a gunslinger in this show and we all killed him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, then you gave his gun to a child <laughs> and with it. we did yeah. we did well, we had a discussion based around that uh, about the sort of how if you're going to have guns in your campaign and uh, what it means and all that kind of stuff uh, I particularly like Ross's um, justification which began as quite a long winded exposition and uh, and quickly became I love guns I love guns <laughs> guns <laughs> guns are cool <laughs> I was like cool well just yeah guns are cool I, I think technology does something fascinating to uh, fantasy uh, settings. I think it does. It says something really, really interesting about the story you're trying to tell. It needs to be the story that you and, and your group are trying to tell, uh, but it can be a really, really interesting story. And if you want to hear the full discussion on that, YouTube danger club podcast have a look at dangerous <laughs> wednesdays the recording from that because we, we talked for like an hour on it and we will not talk for an hour on in this because we are having an adventure in the city of quantium right now or rather under the city of quantium oh yeah uh, so you have been on the trail of Bajan and zainab olavi who are a, a pair of um, a pair of alchemists you know from the city of Onepian. Uh, and the reason you're looking for them is you've been in Quantium trying to find uh, the Scrivenborough the demon library of Abraxas where you will be able to find out finally what these shards that you've been carrying around with you for goodness knows how many episodes find out what they actually do perhaps there's a book there called the Elibrium which is going to tell you um, but the Scrivenborough is a secret library uh, and you think you've heard via her lovely bookseller who sold Fulton a book on horse sex uh, that the Olavi twins claim to have been to the Scrivenborough and may know how to get into it uh, and so you've been to their address to try and find out what it is you found their address you found their address was an abandoned apothecary shop with a deadly trap inside you nearly killed poor Burke the knoll finding your way in um, and you finally got in went down into the sewers and have been attacked by a big slimy ooze so you get the picture maybe these twins do not wish to be disturbed whatever they are doing um, but you defeated the ooze pretty handily there um, that, that was I was unsure of how that fight would go because it's a very different kind of fight to uh, a lot of the ones you've been in it requires some pretty special tactics uh, and you you pulled it off really successfully so uh, congratulations a, a, a well fought fight there by the Danger Club who's laughing now <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, so Thank you guys, us- I'm going to go now. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> Are you giving us props in then? Uh, I am giving you know, you for, props. for actually for actually being organised and thinking about stuff because I'm not sure that's what we did. I think it was still luck. <laughs> no, you always- I think sort of- if you're lucky that you've got like a bludgeoning weapon or something like that in your arsenal, then you're quite effective against those sort of creatures aren't L- you lucky lucky to have one you mean after months and weeks of making sure that you have the tools for the job <laughs> yeah. after losing a member of the party to something that could be avoidable yeah. the four 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 planning yeah, did yeah. go into it mr two characters ross <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> just a bit, just oh what about beelzebub just breaking out that spell at the uh, the 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 potion that you drank uh, Which and then you, the first oh, time the, you did the, the one that turned into the bashy oh, the, bashy the, man, the, the stone the bashy bashy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's because yeah. I haven't seen that yet. Isn't that a yeah, cool yeah, feature you know. of uh, that class? <laughs> no, there's a lot of other ones. There's a lot of other things. Yeah, I don't want to bore you with all of them, but yeah, there's <laughs> yeah, 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 so. Yeah. Mut- mutagens are not a core factor in a mutagenist um, alchemist <laughs> class at all, are they, Ross? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> DM burn! Be throwing your bombs. Well, let's find out if you've got any more mutagens up your sleeve. You probably have. You haven't used any for God knows how many episodes. Yeah. Um, but let's see if you find your way through it. So we'll pick up where we are. You're kind of just picking yourselves back up um, out of the slime, having defeated them all. Um I believe Beelzebub and uh, Beelzebub and Shania, you are particularly mucky because you jumped down into the uh, into the filth to fight against the creature. It only comes up; it's only about a foot deep, so it only comes up to your, uh, up to your knees. Um, so it's not too bad. And uh, you have established in the early one that the filth in this part of the sewer is not dangerous. You avoided 
the uh, the path uh, with all of the dangerous blue sticky goo in it um, but it is pretty slimy and it's very easy to just climb back up onto the uh, onto the, the walkway along the side where everyone else is so you kind of haul yourself out of the muck uh, and you're left sitting in this room the uh, the passage carries on off to the uh, you'd say in a westerly direction uh, and you can see a faint light coming from that direction before we go anywhere, um, Shania would like to drag Philippe out of the muck as well, because he got quite badly hurt during that. I don't know if I've done this yet already. I don't think I did. But um, uh, Shania would like to um, sort of put a potion down his neck. Do you want to put a potion down his neck, or do you want to try using your healing tools to patch him up? Oh, you can I use your medicine do to do that. it. Um, yeah. Um well, I mean, the thing is, it's, he's, he's, I mean, he's quite badly hurt. Um, I might just give him some potion. <laughs> and we're in a bit of a rush as well. Oh, we're in a bit of a rush. All right. Like, it's um, really. Or, yes and no. Um, so your right. treat your treat wounds works every your treat wounds works. I think it's every um, uh, every hour. I believe you can do it. Um, so okay. you can do you can do one of those, and then you could give him a potion afterwards if you want to. All right. Okay. I'll do a treat wounds then. Okay. What's your what's your how, what's your level in um, in medicine? Are you trained, expert, or master? Uh, I am expert at expert. the moment. All yes. right, go ahead. It's a DC, um, so it's a DC twenty um, okay. medicine check. Sure. Oh. Ooh. Ooh, dice. Okay, that is uh, twenty five. Twenty five. Mm. That is a success. So he Great. is healed. Uh, so that heals 2d8 plus 10 hit points. Fantastic. Thanks very much. There's that a d8. Is, there's a d8. That's a powerful plus 10, thing. do you say? 2d8, 2D8 plus wow. 10. Yeah. Wow. wow. That's, a, that's a big I didn't, deal. I didn't realise that. I was no, uh, um, it's a party it's a really healer. powerful okay. thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realise I could heal. This is mental. Well, I thought I was mostly using magic for that, but apparently no. I, I did do a load of medicine stuff because I'm supposed to be a healer. So you're right. You're right. I should pay more attention to what I'm doing. Um, okay. So yeah, he's, he's he's back. He's back. He's almost up to full, in fact, from that. So wow. that's great. Nice. Because um, at 17, I push him in the back. Mark. <laughs> yeah, I heal him. I heal him. And then I slap him around the face. Like, you stupid monkey! What do you think you're doing? Get, almost get yourself killed. I love you. And then you take seventeen points of damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I giveth and I taketh away. I think you got scared off it in the uh, like early on because it is possible to, if you crit fail the roll to do damage with it. Oh, damage. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But by the point you're at now, it's starting to become almost impossible to crit fail okay. it, um, because right. your your skill your skill is so high with it. Yeah. So cool. there you go. So you All right. heal quite a bit of hit points to him. You patch him up. You bandage um, Felipe. Uh -huh. Looks yeah. pretty tough. Um, do you want to give him a healing potion as well? Uh, no, do you know, he doesn't need it. It's fine. Cool. Let's go. <laughs> Good stuff. So you spend 10 minutes working on that. How's everyone else feeling? Everyone else? Good yeah, I'm go. okay. Yeah, um, not too bad. Right. I think uh, Shania dropped some healing mid-fight, didn't she? Or did, did something? No, I'd, I'd run out of healing, I think, by the time we got in here because of all the acid. So there was no... Ah, uh, uh, yeah. I, I healed everyone after the acid, and then that was the end of my healing spells for the day. That was I'm it. on 30 mm. hit points out. Uh, so half, but yeah, it's all right. Yeah. Um, You've got another character. On him. Yeah, you also got two characters. I mean, yeah. Beelzebub can also heal, right? Uh, to take, the, take some of the load from Shania. No... So anyone with medicine and a healer's kit can can do skill healing. Uh, otherwise, it's potions. I think the Beelzy boob is sort of like the. I can the like. I can. Go on. What oh, am no, I like? I was just going to say. I was. Just, he's sort of like the tombola of companions, isn't he? You just sort of stick your hand in and just feel like you know. Who knows what's going to come out? Could be a mutagen. Could be a bit of healing. Could be an acid <laughs> flask in the face. You know. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can make on one, that probably. Um, okay. Yeah. You got. You got. You can make a healing potion. Who else has got apart from Shania? Who else has got a? A medicine score that's that's tenable. Uh, I've got a medicine score of eight, which is oh. all right. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. We should buy you some healers kits. Yeah, or you should buy yourself some healers kits. I could buy myself some healers kits. Well, it's like it's one of those things that I've, I've never really looked at that mechanic either because it's sort of gradually ticked up in the background. Because obviously, well, you know, at first level I had a two or something ridiculous. So 
I guess yeah, remember when remember when Brimbone was trying to medicine heal all the sick wolf <laughs> and <laughs> just ended up ramming lavender up in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's yeah. Yeah. if you do. I wonder we didn't do it. Yeah, because I, I, I did think that just when Dan was describing it to Drum, because obviously in the, the early levels, medicine kind of punches you in the face when you try and use it. So you go as a character, you're like, oh, well, I won't bother with that. And then, of course, as you level up, you completely forget about it because you never. It's like, hang on, I'm going to try and stick some lavender up your nose again. He's like, nah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. very quickly it becomes a thing that everyone can have and you can like have half the party just patching themselves up in between every fight so you, c- you can easily do that so it takes 10 minutes to uh, if uh, if you want to heal so either Shania can take 10 minutes each uh, and can do some healing to you or you can uh, she can ha- obviously you can't both use the tools at once so you if you've only got one set only one person can try it once well, so I can only use a treat, treat wounds once this hour can't I uh, only once on a person only a person can only benefit from treat wounds uh, once in an hour so, do oh, it so I can do it but you okay. can do it on anyone else um, ah alright okay this is good this is good good to know good to know all, all right. useful <clears throat> stuff alright so <clears throat> any more healing or are we going to push on through the service? yeah does anyone need anything Okay. Um, no, let's crack on. All right, feeling sure feeling confident. Sure, Fulton doesn't want a bit of a top up. He's done half hit points. No, no, that's Beelzebub. Oh. Uh, I don't think I don't think I've taken any damage as Fulton. I'd say it's unlikely, with given that things to hit roll versus Fulton's insane armor class. Yeah, so it's right. only Beelzebub. Let's push on. Um, I've got, I got an elixir of life, but it only does like D six da- uh, D six healing. Uh, Wow, that's some creative marketing right there, isn't there? The elixir of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a little boo-boo <laughs> that heals up your wrist. It's <laughs> it so much better sure. when it's... Oh, what level are we? Oh, yeah, uh, no, actually, I'll level five. I can do... I can do... Still level five. Less Still, level, Still five, level five. Which is 3d6. Um, yeah, I'm going to chug a... Uh, I'm going to get Jam Jam to make me a elixir of life. Uh, lesser. Yes, father. Make I me use it with my own life force, which is also your life force, does and he then just put it back into you. It probably doesn't do anything. Does he just turn around and then start just doing something in a bottle, and then yeah. uh, <laughs> uh, you all just he just waddles off into the corner, and you all stand really awkwardly <laughs> while you just listen to the sound of fluid draining into a bottle, <laughs> um, and then there's kind of a drip, drip, drip um, <laughs> as he just does a little shake, turns around, and presents you with a bottle. Ah, good. That couldn't have been any worse, that roll. Um, <laughs> I got uh, 6, 6, 12. 12 hit points back. 12 hit points For back. For all good that healing was, you might as well piss it up a wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, have, we, have we previously established that uh, Jam Jam has no external uh, protuberances mm. for urinating? So just, uh, it, I think the word was dripping effluvians before, wasn't it? On, uh, on he, he leaks. Himself? Yeah, he just sort of leaks it. Yeah, yeah. As um, as as Beelzebub and Jam Jam are engaged in this uh, intimate ritual, um, Karagor just says to Shania and Bubba, sort of over his shoulders, like, "Yeah, it's weird watching someone put their life force into something and then bring it back out of something. It's weird. It almost reminds me of something else. Something else. Someone else just reminds me of someone. Can't oh yeah. Quite place it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I just. Yeah. Yeah. No, nope, I'm drawing a blank. Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah, I know exactly nope. what you mean. Draining nope, life forces. No, I have no idea. Draining. Cycle of oh. like draining and then putting it back. Oh, and, oh, yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I suddenly I remember what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Father, this would be so much easier if I had a digit with which to excrete it. I have to use a shiwi. <laughs> uh, yes. It's quiet. Don't, don't ever say that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I will put it back in my flap. <laughs> Uh, look, this is yeah. lovely, but should we should we push yeah, on? Let's go. <laughs> we should probably is, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is the, the the place with a faint bit of light the only obvious way we can go? Uh, you can go back the way you came, and then go back down the tunnel with the glowing blue slime. Um, but you were all pretty adamant that that felt like a bad idea um, last time. Um, so uh, it's that or or onwards towards the light. Onwards towards on- the light. Yes, I guess. Onwards towards the light. Okay. Let's go. 
I tell you what, can you give me some party order while you're walking down here since we're since we're underground? Um, sure. Bolton probably up front. Um, Does that make sense? Uh, Felder's in the middle backish. Mm-hmm. Bubba's uh, slap bang in the middle. Right. Uh, I guess Shania is uh, probably next to Caragor. Uh, well, Caragor's probably um, if if we can go two abreast, mm-hmm. and Caragor's mm-hmm. probably walking next to Fulton uh, for trap finding um, situation y things. That sounds. The other Bubba be at the back. So Beelzebub yeah, this probably just this awkward moment where Caragor goes to walk up next to Fulton, and Shania is there as well, and Caragor's <laughs> like, "Oh, I just so it's just I've got a." You know, I've got. A, it's not that I've got. Yeah, one. yeah, yeah. No, no, it's 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 okay. I I know you have to do the the, the trappy thing. That's okay. okay. Yeah, I like to. It's okay. I like to be behind you too. That's fine. Well, we can have. You can have three abreast. You can walk up front with the uh, with the others if you like. Should I? You can be. <laughs> no, no. I, I I like to be behind. Yeah, it's probably <laughs> just best if you hang because it's me and Fulton. And <laughs> yeah. You know, we always. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. Very good. All right then. And Philippe guards the rear. So you make your way along through, traipsing through the muck. Um, this this slime, it kind of, it's not just like a sewer stuff. Like it's, I think you established earlier on, Velda had a look at it. It is kind of runoff from the various magic schools. So there's sometimes they're just like sort of gr- glowing seams running through this slime that kind of goes past you, um, and it sticks to your boots a little bit. It's gross and it stinks, but it doesn't uh, it doesn't seem to have any adverse effects. After a little bit of walking, uh, you find the source of the light is coming from uh, an exit over to the right-hand side. You can see there is a, a, a doorway. There's no, there's a little curtain pulled across it, um, but there is no, um, there's no door on it. So the sewer itself carries on ahead of you, uh, and then to right there is a, a door, a doorway with a curtain through which there is a crack of light emitting around the side of it. Right, looks like that's the place to go, isn't it? That's like the place, yes. Trappy. Yeah, but let, let's let's be cautious here. I mean, I, we don't know what the fuck is behind the curtain. So Can silently, <clears throat> just Caragor just turns to the rest and makes a few hand gestures near his eyes, <laughs> and then and then looks stern, and then would like to check for traps. All right, go ahead. Give me a perception. I will. Do you want Bubba to roll as well, or is this one of those ones that you want to do by yourself? Uh, there's nothing that I just want to do by myself. There's, if you if you want to roll with your character, you know, if you if you if you want to do it, Colin, don't let someone else take the lead on it. You know, no, it just got your own point. character, man. Don't it let got... me define what you do with your own character. I got a thirteen. Roll, roll. I got a thirteen. <laughs> you can do what you want, man. You no, I'm want, not going to roll. I'm not going to roll. Oh, That's okay, it. cool. No, cool. no, I will, I will, I will. I will. Oh, yeah, I got. Uh, mine's pretty good. Mine is. Uh, <laughs> mine's twenty six. A twenty six. All right. So you you search around the area. You don't find any evidence of traps, and you um, you don't hear anything coming from the room. The room sounds silent. You don't hear any of the sounds of breathing or, or conversation or me moving around. It feel you're pretty confident it's empty. That's empty through there. That's fine. Let's go. All yeah, right. Did the, did the the slimes and ooze make any sound? Well. They don't breathe, like that. Do they? They're so a bit be... swishy, sloshy, aren't they? Yeah. See? Gloopy, bloopy, you know? Blippity, blobbity. Burpy, flirpy. They're a bit like that. It takes a bard to be so descriptive with noises. <laughs> it's, it's, really, it's, it's, a, it's a wonder to listen to, it really. That was, that, that was one of my poems. That reminds me of that, <laughs> that, uh, that dessert you made for us. Do you remember? Oh yeah, the the thingy block thing. Yeah, I can't remember the name now because uh, it's been I don't know four weeks blocky since we recorded block. that. <laughs> blocky, 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 chunky, wonky, blocky. monkey, flump, blah blah blah. It was basically a cheesecake, to be honest. I just gave it a funky <laughs> it's, name. Yeah, it's all about marketing, isn't it? You can't just call it a cheesecake. You want a chunky hunk, flumper, blumper. And it for took those what, that don't three know, weeks for this to become canon when we said it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now you need to entwine this into the narrative, Dan. Like how oh, we managed right. to have those dinner parties. Go. Yeah. If you don't know what we're talking about, this is a patron thing. Uh, if you want to subscribe to the patron, <laughs> you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'll, I'll add it in with France and Birmingham and all of the other things that we need to fit into our world somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay. What are we doing with this? What are we doing with this glowing room? Um, Caragor I guess would like to take a peek peek around the curtain please okay cool Caragor yeah. steps up you pull the curtain aside and you peer inside inside the room uh, it is a, a fairly 
you reckon this was maybe like a workroom or something in the sewers it looks like it's always been a part of it here but it seems to have been converted into sort of living quarters uh, there is a uh, uh, there is a, a couple of beds that seem to be are behind curtains. There's some curtains strung up around them to keep them quiet. Um, there are some, there's a table covered in notes, and there's a bookcase with all sorts of uh, different books uh, and scraps of paper and things tucked into it. There is a as you poke your head around, the smell of the sewer disappears, and there's a lovely sort of scent of kind of spices and tobacco in this room. Uh, and you can see on the table next to a weird contraption with a dagger in it, uh, there's a little pot that seems to be burning with uh, some kind of incense in it that's just smouldering away. There are a couple of ever-burning torches that are up in the uh, on the side of it which are providing light for this room, but there is nobody in here. From what I know of Trappy Wappies, does that contraption with a dagger look like it could harm something or someone or has some kind of trigger lever to it? I mean, anything with a dagger in it can feasibly harm someone. Um, you don't feel like... It doesn't look like it's gonna spring out across the room um sort of okay. you and bubba between the two of you have rolled well enough that you know you don't think that this is something that's gonna kind of spring out and, and attack you okay um it looks like it's something it's not to say it's completely benign but it might it doesn't look like a trap per se yeah I, yeah i know we rolled sort of outside i wasn't sure about the inside no, but no, sure okay um okay um i take a, another sort of look around and then i gesture to the others and slowly step into the room um, okay. Sh- Shania follows. Okay, um, you slip inside and you have a little look around the room. Slip inside the weird alchemist room. Uh, uh, so, <coughs> I don't know. So you, got, you, you see there is stuff burning here. I think maybe someone uh, someone may come back at some point. We must be on our guard, yeah? Someone was here quite recently, yeah. yeah so look yeah, at these yeah. notes on a table. What are some Ooh, yes, let's on look the table at the notes. Mm. Okay, so... Um, so you sort through all of the notes and they all there's lots of different formulas here um, like just long mathematical formulas um, that are, are pretty hard to understand unless uh, you are at least trained in crafting um, I am okay go ahead and give us a it got bardic law as well so you can give us a crafting check if you want or a, a bardic law check try and work out what they are oh, I bet the alchemist of the party would really want to have a look oh, oh, oh yeah okay go on Bubba go on. That's, a, that's a 21 that I mean that's, that's a 21, 21. That. No, sorry I'm uh, answering as Bubba all right they are indeed alchemical formulas um, you're looking through them they appear to be experiments they look like if you you're not an expert but they look like experiments tr- aimed at they're all to do with oozes. They're all to do with uh, creating and manipulating living oozes. Um, however, many of them seem to have kind of crossings out or things at the bottom of them. They, are, you, If you didn't know better, you'd say that they were failures. Um, all these seem to be failed experiments. You'd also find a, uh, you also find a book as you're searching through all this stuff. It's kind of the only, the only book that isn't just a, um, a textbook on alchemy. Um, you find a very old, very dusty-looking book um, tucked into the bookshelf. It is entitled The Language of the Kings. Uh, and it, um, as you look through it, you can see that it has a piece of paper tucked into it as a bookmark. If you flip through it, it seems to be... Um, it's full of hieroglyphs and, um, uh, and, and notes and things on the hieroglyphs, but you, you're not particularly sure exactly what that is. Hey, look at these experiments, Beelzebub. Take a look at these. It looks like failed experiments. You'd know a lot about this. And this book here, The Language of Kings. I don't know what that's about, but it's full of hieroglyphs. Look at this, people. Uh, yes, I already, I already knew that because I was just doing it in secret behind you. Yeah. Oh, right. Just looking over my shoulder. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's nice. Here, yeah, Velda, what do you think of this? Uh, well, yes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Velda sort of like uh, picked up the book. And uh, mm-hmm. would it be an occultism check? Um, I would say it's a society, society. check for this okay. one. Okay. Mm. Oh yeah, baby, that's a twenty-nine. Mm. A twenty-nine. This is a book on ancient Osirian. Ancient Assyria was a uh, an empire that ruled most of Garand thousands of years ago. Um, it is now the nation of Assyria now still exists, but is a lot smaller. But ancient Assyrian was the the 
the vastly spoken language of of the upper classes thousands of years ago so a lot of textbooks in this part of the world if they're very very old um, you might find books written in that so it's a bit like latin uh, and this appears to be kind of a guide to translating particularly advanced forms of that language mm, interesting oh. i relate that to the group um, while this has been going on, while the while the books people are doing their booksy things, I'd like to go to the other entrance and just quietly poise myself near it to keep a watch out and an ear out to see Very who's coming sensible. in. Okay, cool. You keep an ear out and keep an, a weather ear. Give us a perception check to see how well you are listening out while you're watching. Come on. Yes. 24. 24. Very nice. Okay, you have the ears of a hawk. Um, doesn't sound right but it's <laughs> tiny <laughs> holes famously um, large eared bat eared hawk Dan, <laughs> um, my role obviously having uh, d- concluded what the book is with my 29 uh, can I see any correlation between the book and any potential alchem- alchemical experiments even though I'm not an expert at alchem- uh, you would none of the none of the notes that they have made are in ancient Assyrian um Right. The the scrap of paper that um, they're using as a bookmark in this book has some ancient Assyrian phrases with translations scrawled on it um, on on the back. Uh, there is also there is also something written in common on the other side of it. Um, you would guess if they're using this, they're using some kind of very old book. And you do remember that Chartredel told you that he met them because they were trying to buy a book on translating ancient Assyrian. Yes. Um, uh, so, so it, it, but you go, yeah. It doesn't seem to be directly related to these formulas. Yes, I would. I would deduce from this that um, the original source material that they're translating is not here. Uh, so maybe they're, I don't know, trying to translate some ancient book of alchemical nonsense. Uh, do, do you think that it could be um, the, the? It's not Oli Brian. Sorry, I've written down. It's Olibrian. Olibrian, not Oli Brian. Um, Oli Brian. <laughs> Oli Brian. <laughs> oh, I'm Oli Brian. The, the way I've written it down, is, it looks like Oli and Brian. I don't know why. Um, <laughs> the, the Olibrian. The Olibrian. Because could could it possibly be they are translating uh, Olibrian from the Olibrian? Um. Potentially, uh, could be anything really. Um, it would be very, very old. I know that much uh, because it's ancient Assyrian. You see. Okay. Good. So, Great. Uh, this is um interesting. Uh, could be good lead. Uh, I wonder where the fuck they are. Um, I'm bored now, so <laughs> I'd like to. I don't know. I'd ask some questions of some people. Um, maybe I should shout out loudly. <clears throat> No, 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 whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I'm, I'm not, I'm not so sure that's, we don't know who's banning. literally waiting for you guys to stop me. <laughs> yes, uh, um, I'm going to, I'm going to keep this, and uh, Velda slips the book into his, his bag, because uh, okay. it might be useful uh, if we find the original source material. Um, mm-hmm. Anything useful here, Beelzebub? Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. All right. Yeah, do you want to, okay. <laughs> All right, Beelzebub declines to search the room. Um, uh, we, well, you've already done it, haven't you? You've only uh, well, I mean, the, the, no. The, you've taken a cursory glance and seen like notes and uh, thing. And, oh, uh, I thought uh, the Colin thing. did it already. Uh, you okay. haven't actually. If you want to make a roll and actually search the room, you yes, can do. I will do that. Okay. Then <laughs> I will do that uh, with a sixteen on the die, and then that is an extra eight, uh, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, nine, fourteen. 24 a 24 there you go is that Beelzebub searching the yes room? okay Beelzebub finds um, Beelzebub finds a, uh, a like an alchemist's pack under one of the beds it, it contains two lesser tangle foot bags and two lesser elixirs of life um, you also upon looking at the dagger you can examining the dagger a bit more closely you can see it's rigged up to some kind of contraption and there seems to be kind of a a greenish substance dripping from the blade of the dagger and being collected in a tiny vial very gradually Um, I reckon with a bit of work you might be able to extract it safely from um, from whatever device is is holding it Uh, well, what is I this? I found something. Yes. It's uh, it's dripping the poison or something into this vial. With my expertise, I could remove it, but uh, it could also poison me and kill me. Uh, would that be would that be an alchemy thing, or would that be a thievery thing? Uh, thievery or occultism? 
Uh, occultism would let you kind of avoid the dangers of it. Thievery would let you just disable the yeah, device. See, we, we know each other's powers and stuff by now, uh, and abilities and things. My thievery is 11. Yeah, my occultism is 10. Um... Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I could try and use cultism to remove this, but uh, I'm happy for being able to take the risk. I um, think he's best, best qualified. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just thinking that Beelzebub, once he gets going, I'd look at him go, you know, yeah, look Beelzebub, at him search yeah. and do things. You stand, there and, you stand there and do that. We'll all go over here. Yeah, OK, yeah, you go uh, ahead. Let's, yes, uh, I, need to, uh, I need to read this book by the torch over there. Uh, Wait, yeah, yeah, what's the, yeah, yeah. the, the Karagor still sort of by the door? What's the... What's the reward here? What are we getting out of this? A tiny vial of green. Well, no, you'd be removing the dagger, not oh. the uh, not the tiny vial. Oh, I thought yeah. we'd want whatever that's coming off the dagger rather than... Oh, right, we get... Well, I mean, you can have both. I, I would be generous. If you roll well enough, I'll give you the both. The tiny um, vial of green. Pretty, pretty... Got, I've got potion. We've got a potion maker in the party, plenty of potions on us, and I'm bristling with weapons. I don't know about you lot. Um, well... Well, well I, I, I don't know. I, I thought we were trying to find out what it is. Yes, I'm quite no. curious as to what uh, what sort of dagger it is. Um, could I try yeah, an occultism green check stuff. to try and work out what kind of dagger it might be, or, or a carnage Yeah, check? go ahead. Give us an occultism check to try and identify. Be nice to have a little guide mm. spell on that, wouldn't it? Uh, that's 18. An 18. Uh, you reckon, <laughs> looking at it, you reckon this is a dagger of venom. Um, mm. So it is, a, it is a particularly potent uh, dagger, so works as a, a a striking dagger plus one dagger i don't think it's striking um but it does uh, it's got easier to hit with and it generates um poison it's plus plus one striking dagger so double damage dice uh, of a normal dagger and it makes targets sickened and once per day uh, you can use it to inject somebody with a horrible poison Ooh. which does poison damage well there we go it's a dagger of yes sickening i've got two of them have Not you? sickening, but I got I got some I got some yeah, it's the old Plurs Vons. Remember oh, the old yes. Plurs Vons? Yes. Yeah, that brand. Famous brand. <laughs> yeah, I've got two of them. Yes. Plurs Vons striking. Old Plurs Vons? Well, they, um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean it depends. Uh, the, it has some value. Um but, I'm, but, I'm, but so here's the thing. Why, why is this person trying, like, dripping all of the poison out of it and collecting it in the vial like this to make something a very, very uh, strong poison, maybe? To, a strong to poisonous this? slime, by the looks of it. If we're oh, putting things oh together. yeah, okay, yeah, 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 okay. So this makes sense. Okay, so bad alchemist person lives around here. Okay, tick, we've done this. Bye. All right, so Shania, well, Shania leaves the room. <laughs> Shania walks out, gets the slime, she just bears off. No, no, she just, she just stands there okay. going, yep, yeah, yeah, what All do you right. think? Huh? I don't think we need it, do we, really? I mean, no. it depends if someone can grab it and then use it on us. That's the only other thing. Yes, it would, of course, uh, prevent whatever is going on here and that person from making the poisonous slime if we took the thing that's making the poison. Exactly. Yeah, okay, then let's do it, go all right. Beelzebub, you're up. Yeah. This is your moment. Uh, this is your perfect... Y- 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 you know what? No. No, I won't do it. You just want me to do it because you want me to sacrifice myself. And I won't do it. Uh, so you, if you want to do it, can do it. And then he sort of puts his hands on his hips and goes, hmm... <laughs> we, yes. want you, we want you to do it because you're the most qualified, no? Yes, I This is your happen. area, yeah? Yeah. We're not bullying you, mate. We're just like you're don't part of the club. I to do it. Uh, and you can't go. make me. Right. Beelzebub has assertively asserted his assertiveness for a change. We're all asked him to do it. He doesn't want to do it. That's fair cop, Beelzebub. No, we're okay. not. Shall we move on? All right, fair, fair play. Come on, oh. then. Oh, it worked. <laughs> but if it someone worked. gets stabbed with that dagger... Yes. <laughs> I'm not saying it's your fault. It's, it's so your fault, to be honest. And uh, the only approach you be as Bob, because you're the expert in alchemical yeah. equipment, and this is clearly alchemical equipment. Um, Out of character, you got told that it was not alchemical. Uh, anyone could do it, and an alchemical person didn't have to. <laughs> it was it was occultism and thievery were the options allowed. I'm not sure if alch- alchemy was an option allowed. Yeah, I know. I'm, I was speaking in character. Yeah, yeah, no, I was thinking <laughs> out of character, but yeah. So, uh, never mind. So well, kind of, on, on we yeah. go. Come on, Ed. Right. Yes. 
you pocket the uh, so you you take the potions you take the tanglefoot bags you take the book with the note in it um and you uh, you leave the dagger of venom behind on the desk as we take the tanglefoot bags caragor just mutters just, really does anyone use them anymore there's just <laughs> tell you what they're so hard to manufacture and they're really worth it honestly just the way they implode basically in on yourself it's just oh, I mean you can flog them you can flog them but I mean honestly apart from you that know, I'm sure they used to be better they, 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 they used to be so good Velda so oh, yeah. I, I tell you I used to be made of them I used to be made I used to be Caragor Tanglefoot One Fang that's what I used to be yeah. it was great I remember and Tanglefoot Arrows oh. as well do you remember those they were good god they were so, so good, good. Yeah, now I may as well use Nerf arrows. Yes. <laughs> What's cool? Nerf? Those two children died using them and they put in all those safety restrictions. Oh. <laughs> I also well, used to enjoy who lets, them. Who lets children play with Tanglefoot bags, honestly? <laughs> so horrible. Imagine that old, like, old Dave Prowse safety adverts for, like, Brit- for uh, little children really, like, don't play with Tanglefoot bags. <laughs> <laughs> like, kids covered in goo. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, as everyone's leaving, um, Shania just takes one little look back at the knife and decides to try and take the uh, knife and the poison um, <laughs> using her thievery. <laughs> yes, Classic Shania. Shania. All right, go for it. Shit. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds uh, weird. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that's a 12. Okay, um, I'm going to. I'm going to need to uh, find the rules for this, aren't I? Oh, no, no. Um, no, hold on. I'm going to use a hero point to try and re-roll. All right. Yes, yes. Strom. Oh, Cashing him in. Oh, I've, I've got, got two of in. them. I keep forgetting oh, about them. Yeah, I've got, I've got, I've got three. I'm like, I'm, I should just use it. What was our sting for, for hero points? Wasn't it I Roxanne? think we make one up every time. Yeah, it was Roxanne, wasn't you it? Can, oh, <laughs> was it? <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So that's that's now an eighteen. An eighteen, that is exactly a success. Um, Shania, you reach you reach to grab the blade of the dagger and then stop just as you're about to and think uh uh ah uh, and reach and grab the hilt of it. Um you manage to find a clip, unclip the dagger, give it a twist, pull it free, and you take away the little vial of venom. And you have a dagger of venom, which you have managed to get and is not um, has not been used up. So you have a dagger of venom. Great. Which has one use of it for today. Nice. Fantastic. Yeah, Good. Slip that in the, you know, in the, in the weapons uh, alcove in my, on my back or whatever. I think it's um, slip that in my alcove. arm. There we go. <laughs> 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 oh, I've you, been uh, some champions. Uh, oh. <laughs> Weren't you, uh, weren't you storing weapons in Philippe last game? <laughs> <laughs> Philippe, come here. I've healed you up. Maybe you're right, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and, and like try and... Can I, can I find something to cork the... the, the, the yeah, the that's fine. You find some yeah. a, a stopper yeah. among it and cork it. All right, okay, okay and then put that away so somewhere as well. You've got a little vial of poison as well. Yeah, okay, yeah. cool. All right, and then sneak off. Which I, I mean, I'm looking forward to because I rem- I know how you remember horrible poisons and things from the sleepy chili. Like that's going to come back in about thirty games time. It's going to get <laughs> slipped into somebody's drink. Yeah. yeah. Um, right. So that with that, you make your way further on down the um, down the passageway. Um, after a little while, you start to uh, you start to hear. How are you progressing? How are you making your way along there? Same as before. With our feet. Same as before. Yeah. All yeah. right. Okay. Make your way down, uh, and you start to uh, see another glowing light coming uh, from further down. As you head down the passageway, you can see more. Um, a, what looks like a larger chamber, lit by ever-burning torches. Give me some perception checks. Let's see if we can hear what's going on up ahead. Get any idea of what's happening there. Nineteen for Velda. Ooh. Nineteen. Okay. Nineteen for Bubba. Nineteen for Bubba. 29 for Shania. Ooh. Ooh. 25, Caragor. 21 for, Car- for Fulton. Oh, very nice. Okay. Good roll. So, Caragor and Shania, you hear um, very faintly, you can hear a kind of a, some kind of a churning noise, like some kind of a mechanical, a bit like a water pump kind of turning over, um, coming from further on down the thing. And you can just about, you can hear the sound of two people talking in. Um, uh, in Nexian accents um, as you're approaching and the, you hear the voices go quiet um, as you all get a bit closer I bring my hand up to stop the group bring my hand up to my lips to make them silent I do I do a symbol for churning water right fingers and then <laughs> and then and then I go 
Um, two, point to ears to say that they've made us. And then I se- and then I gesture forward questioningly to the rest of the group. Uh, Ve- Velda gives a sort of tentative thumbs up, but he's got a pretty blank expression on his face. Uh, Shania, Shania whispers in Karagor's ear, Cop, cop. Yeah, fuck it, yeah, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, so sorry that, and they walk up, you know, sort of weapons out, ready to, you know. Okay. There. You step up side by does anyone, side. Does anyone and, uh, else not understand what Karagor's doing with his weird charades? Oh, I, haven't got, I haven't got a no, clue, Scooby, mate. I don't <laughs> know what, what he's <laughs> doing. I don't know. But he always looks so intense. He looks right in your eyes, and I... I just don't know what he's doing. Yeah, just, let him have his bottle. I know. Yeah. I just think it's it's one of his things. <laughs> if it makes him happy, then yeah. I'll just let him do it. Yeah, just he do a couple of hand gestures a, back. He'll love I mean, it. That curtain really disappointed him. Do you see how disappointed he was with that curtain? He couldn't kick he it. So he even gave it a little toe so nudge. It was like it was sad. It was just sad to see. Yeah, peeking behind a curtain. It's not Caragor's way. No, he can't kick a curtain. <laughs> that's, that's rubbish. <laughs> I think that's why he's doing all the hand things. I think it's just stress getting out of his yeah. system. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you step into the uh, you step into the room uh, and you see it is a large chamber much bigger than the one you were in before there are a few things noticeable about it straight away um, it's about 16 feet high it's the same layout as the other ones it's got kind of a walkway around uh, about a 10 foot walkway all the way around it uh, the rest of it is full of sludge most notably is in the very middle of the room sitting in the sludge is a gigantic contraption it's about 20 feet across um, some kind of big mechanical thing sitting on round legs with hoses coming off it going into the slime which appear to be just sucking up slime from the ground um, and uh, there are uh, pipes and things coming off the side of it you can see a couple of windows on it it is kind of humming um, and you can see it just slurping up stuff from around it there are also some people in here across from you standing on the platform on the other side there are a pair of uh, Nexians um, they have there is a man and a woman uh, the man has his hair tied really tight in a pair of braids the woman has it done up on her head in a bun um, their faces are marked with uh, a number of um, chemical burns and scars and you can see the same on their on their hands there is uh, also uh, another figure in the uh, room there is a small clay creature um, about uh, a couple of about three feet tall maybe um, it is it has a sort of crudely done face on it with a kind of a, a with a sort of smiling expression just drawn onto the clay um, it is uh, currently working it's in the in the slime standing next to the contraption uh, with a big spanner just kind of turning um, a, a bolt on it uh, it is up to its chest basically in slime as it's working the two of them are uh, a look the two humans are looking over notes um, and but as you come in they kind of look up directly uh, unsurprised at your approach uh, as they've they've definitely heard you approaching um, Bajan and Zenup, we have some questions. The uh, the uh, the man turns to the woman and says, "I told you, I told you the Arch Lords would send somebody, Zenup. They they cannot f- uh, fathom their secrets being taken from them." Uh, no, 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 um, no. No, we're just we're we're um, independent adventurers uh, looking. Or something that we think you might be able to help with, but we're not. We're not coming here in any sort of antagonism. Uh, Beelzebub steps forward and goes, "I am a fellow alchemicalist, Mewen, and here is my alchemical familiar, Jam Jam. I see you have clay clay over there. <laughs> well, we would like uh, your expertise." You also have burns. I have a burn in my face as well from the uh, chemical uh, reagents. Well, yeah, it looks like it's burns nights. Hell, tense <laughs> diplomatic optimism nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> the um, the man turns to the woman and just goes, his voice. The woman uh, nods to him and says, Archlord. 
uh, and both of them reach for their uh, pockets. Roll for initiative. Oh, oh, Beelzebub's yes, presence can trigger <laughs> combat. Oh, like this it's... guy. <laughs> yeah, it can. Ooh. Could have talked our way out of that. Ooh. Yeah, we could have. Ooh. 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 All right. I don't Let's know. have some initiative for Fulton Battlestone. Uh, Fulton got oh, 23. A 23. And while we're on you, have you got one for Beelzebub? Yeah, he got a... 15. A 15. Very good. All right, Velda. Uh, 26. 26, Velda. Quick off the mark. Bubba Von Hoops. 28. 28. Ooh. Quicker off the mark. I know. Caragor One Fang. Uh, it's a filthy 20. A filthy 20. Still good. Look at that. Only one below 20. Shania, what we got? 16. A, a 16. Oh. 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 So, this is a big combat. Um, so the first person to act, I mean, a lot of you are going to get to act first. The first person to act is Bubba Von Hoops, standing in the middle of the group in the slime. Um, what do you want to do? You've got the, uh, you've got the fellas uh, across from you. Uh, you've got the big machine. You've got the little clay guy. Uh, and they basically have gone for their weapon. They've gone for the vials on their belt. And you know Beelzebub. You know alchemists. You know what they're, try- what they're going to be doing. They're just about say. to throw some stuff, are they? Yeah, how much of how much free action, like quick talk, are you allowing in between combat rounds, Dan? Um, a little talk is fine. Like if you want to make skill checks, then that's got to be in your round. But that machine, I yeah, I just I'm just bringing your attention to the machine as all. Well. I just it's got pumps and pipes in it. I just reckon that one twist from that clay thing is going to start churning out slimes at us. I'm just saying. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, uh, Bubble would like to. Uh, j- Actually, do you know what? I'm going to speak. Bubba would like to just go, Now, wait, 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 wait. Just stop what you're doing. We're not here to fight you. We just want to ask you some questions. Don't throw anything. Just stand the fuck down. And I'm going to use, like, everything I've got, like, intimidating glare. And I'm going to roll intimidation to try right. and stop them to, uh, you know, doing that. And it's a dirty 20. A dirty, uh, a dirty twenty. Who are you using it on? You're using it on the uh, on the alchemist, yeah. Yeah. All right, that is gonna uh, uh, a dirty twenty. That is that's enough to frighten one of them. So uh, Zainab is frightened. Um, so you manage to uh, you manage to intimidate her. So she is going to be she's been a penalty for this round. Okay. She shout at her. She's uh, yeah. She looks hesitant for a moment and looks to her brother, but her brother is still. Her brother is still trying to go for his weapon. Okay, um, uh, and my other action would be to... I don't know, actually, I'm just going to... I'm. I, I don't know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> you could try and intimidate the other one. Uh, yeah, I could do. Uh, I can intimidate the other one as well. All right, I'm just going to intimidate the other one. That is a better right. roll as well. That's 24. 24 he is intimidated as well okay and i would like to intimidate the clay thing <laughs> all right <laughs> that's what i'm gonna do <laughs> i'm gonna intimidate the three of them um <laughs> yeah and that's a 19 a 19 the creature the little clay thing just looks at you with its uh, its blank smiling expression and then carries on with its work it doesn't right. seem at all phased by you but that's you go brilliant Zelda Kemblight, you're next uh okay um, are we just going all out combat thing, aren't we? I don't think we're going to get a chance. We go. We need to take these guys alive, almost, don't we? Because we need to ask some questions. Have you got anything that would subdue rather than kill? <laughs> Hold, sleep, yes. uh, paralyze, um, um, distract, I, glittery. I could try, yes, because it's either that or the big guns, which uh, I don't think there's going to be much left of that. Okay, so uh, I'm going to. Uh, it's not as good. Um, you got a spell that would like I don't know. I don't know if a bit of electricity would jolt the machine or not. It could be. I mean, it's mechanical. But uh, Dan, how far away are they? So from where you are standing, um, the, the twins I think are about fifty feet from you. Yeah. The, so the twins are twins are fifty feet. 
Um, the clay guy is 35 feet and the machine is about 30 feet. Okay. Um, oh, 50 feet. God damn it. I mean, you can move closer to them. Yeah, I know, but I forget that I can't move closer and then do something. Unfortunately, they'd be just ah. out of range of what I was intending. Uh, I didn't think we were that far away. Okay, not to worry. Um... I've got an idea. Okay, so uh, I would like to cast Gust of Wind at them. Uh, a line of mm. wind, 60 feet, uh, to try and stop any kind of throwing nonsense from them. So uh, I'd like to right, cast that. Kind of throwing nonsense. Um, does that affect everything in a line between you and them? Uh, it does. Okay. Uh, I, You know what, it... It's funny if I don't mention it, but it's unfair because only I can see the map. Fulton is standing in front of you because you wanted to be directly in the middle oh. of the group. So if you do this, it will hit Fulton unless you take an action. I to move will in take front an action him. in that case to. St- well, hang, hang before we get too hasty there. Um, would it would it yeet Fulton into combat with them? <laughs> oh uh, my god! No, it would. It could either Aww. it could either knock him prone, um, or it could knock him prone, uh, push him thirty feet, and do a lot of damage. I mean, who do you reckon's so, got better con and survivability, Fulton or these two? I'm just saying, you know, just saying. As tempting as it is. <laughs> <laughs> um, Velda steps forward, uh, sort of steps through, and, okay. and just unleashes a gust of wind straight across. Uh, so, uh, there, there is... Apologies, I haven't used this in flipping ages, this spell. Um, so, they um, will need to make a fortitude save... A fortitude. Is it just? Is it a line? Is it a line? A, is it a? It's a line. So it's only going to hit that's one. That's okay. Of them, but um, but that's fine. So by then it's going to be. I'd like to big. aim it so the other one. So I go for the one on the from where I'm imagining. They're on the right hand side. Oh, they're directly across. Oh, so the from platform's here. straight in the middle. Um, uh, which platform? The one we they're about standing here? on. They're standing on. No, so it runs all the way around the room. They're on it, but on the other side of the room to where you ah. are. So you've entered on one side of the room. They're standing on the other side of the room, up on the uh, on the platform. But this platform is not high, no. so it, like, it's a ledge. It's not a okay, platform. So it's just like the path around. So, the side, so side there's something so, somewhat specific. Uh, I'd like to go in the room, go to the corner, and then aim at uh, sort of the one on the left, so that the line hits them, but then also cuts in front of the other one. So okay. To sort of make because I'm trying to make a wall of air, so that if anyone tries to throw anything through it, it's not gonna it's gonna gust it off. Sure. Yeah, okay, you can do cool. that. Uh, okay, so you, uh, so that's uh, that's gonna be against Zainap. Zainap gets a fortitude save, nineteen on the Ooh, die. Is, is uh, it against so, my spell DC? Uh, it's against your spell DC. Yeah, it's a fail. Uh, uh, no, that well. Uh, let me just go ahead and the add their. Oh, yeah. Let me just add their fortitude. I thought you, did, uh, I thought to you were it. quicker than that, Dan. Uh, that makes it. A, that's a thirty-four. <laughs> yeah, that's Jesus. a success. Uh, however, the, the, the wind is still there. It is still affecting them, but uh, yes. Okay, so you've put a line of wind uh, across the room. Uh, very nice. Okay. And that is um, all my go. Is that... T- that is a move go, and two, two actions. actions. Yep. Very nice. Okay, so you've put a line of wind through there. That means it's Fulton Battlestones go. Uh, I'm going to... Um, Intimidate them with intimidate glare to stop what they're doing again. Okay. Um, uh, I did. Actually, I'm just going to use normal intimidation because I don't have intimidating glare up. Okay. But it's fine because it's a good one. In- intimidating glare just means you don't need to speak the same language. So that's a natural 20. So that's a 29. On Oof. the die to okay, intimidate. Okay, Zainap is intimidated even more. Um, does it matter what I say or like when it's I'm intimidating? What would, um, what would I'm you gonna, like to say? I'm going to say, look, we're not here to hurt you. We just did that windy thing so that you just relax, okay? We don't want to hurt you. We just want to talk. Uh, so please... And you as well. I intimidate the other one. And um, that is a 20. On the, okay. Uh, 20, uh, yeah, not an actual 20, just a 20. Dirty 20. Okay. That intimidates uh, him. So you, you tell them you're not here to hurt them in a way that intimidates them and makes them feel that they're ver- you're very much here to hurt them. Yeah. Um, they, are, they get... They get more frightened. They are they are pretty frightened of you right now. So you've got one action left. Um, I'm just going to... 
you get my war hammer out. Okay, you draw it. your war hammer. Good round. Okay. Um, Bajan, um, he's got some penalties, but he's doing. All, he's still feeling confident. Bajan runs over, um, uses one action to run over to the side, another to uh, another to draw and throw. Mm, he's going to go for a moderate acid flask. Um, so this is going to be at Velda. That's uh, it's a twenty-one. Uh, Yes, uh, that that's a hit. Okay. Isn't he fifty feet away? Uh, he's moved. Okay. Uh, so he's moved twice to get close enough to be able to do it. So he's only, he's only got one throw, but he, he has he is in range. Uh, so he moves twice. He throws the acid. It hits you. It deals. Uh, 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 it's only two d six plus splash, and there's no one it can splash to. So go ahead and take eight points of acid damage um, from him throwing it at you. Um, uh, that is all he can do with his go. Caragor, one fang, it's your go. We did try talking, lads. We tried it. We tried it. We um, tried. So... Uh, da, 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 the clay thing is going to pump some stuff out in a bit. Um, I just reckon that uh, we should we should neutralize that thing. So I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess, I guess I'm going to target the clay thing and try mm-hmm. and take it out. I'm not sure if it's, I don't know what kind of hit points Jam Jam's got, but I probably won't do it in one round. Um, one thing I do have, Dan, on my composite longbow is volley. Uh, if it's uh, over thirty foot. Is that uh, volley? Volley, I believe, means you have a penalty if you're fighting. If you try and fire it when it's under forty, uh, under thirty foot. Okay, great. Um, that's fine. So it is over thirty foot. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Um, I'll take a shot at the clay thing. All right. You line up the clay guy. You take a shot. Oh, hello. I see you. It's you I'm looking for. Uh that is a 24 a 24 is a hit oh. roll some damage good um. uh, that is 7 points of damage piercing damage ok that hits the creature it staggers backwards the arrow just sticks in the clay um, yeah that did da- that all went through that did damage I'm going to take another shot Go for it. Mm-hmm. Poor little clay man. Creepy faced clay man. He's happy faced. <laughs> Creepy. Creepy faced. Uh, uh, that's a that's a that's a nineteen. A nineteen's a miss. Okay. The clay man ducks into the slime as it and the arrow whistles over the top of it. Okay. One action left. I have one action left. Poor thing. Um, he just wanted to be a boxer, you know. Cassius Clay. <laughs> Clay man. Clay man. Ah, I got a <laughs> um, no, We're doing a different song. Well, oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's my own song. No, that's it. I'm done. I'm going to move. I'm going right. to move further away from the cluster of people uh, towards where Velda is, so I can try and take the flak from him. Uh, sure. in, in next round yeah you move up you can basically get in front of um, get in front of Elder that's fine I've got you Elder. Uh, blocking him uh, thanks very nice uh, and with that the machine shudders and shakes <sighs> one of the uh, one of the pipes on it rumbles um, and you see it open up and just start spewing green goo out of the side of it into the uh, the muck around the goo starts to coalesce and rise up until it rises up into an enormous green cube gelatinous it may be as it begins rumbling towards all of you yes a gelatinous cube is an ooze yes you're gonna fight one and we're gonna do it next week that's what oh, we need for tonight I, everyone yeah. this is the face of someone who bloody called it <laughs> there's not a great deal we could have done about that to be honest <laughs> no not really the machine and what are we supposed to do <laughs> the clay man and the machine 
Clay Man. Mm. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> This week's episode was made possible by our patrons, and especially our dangerling of the week, Candice Karenin. Karenin, 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 Candice Karenin. To get your name on the podcast, go to patreon.com forward slash danger club podcast. Danger Club.